We're good. We're good. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, prior to the um, uh, open session, council met for a brief closed session. It was moved by Councillor Bachman, seconded by Councillor McCann. The pursuant to section 239.2 and three of the Municipal Act, SO 2001C25 is amended. Council of the Corporation of the Town of Perry Sound moves to a meeting closed to the public in order to address a matter, a matter pertaining to C, a proposed or pending acquisition or disposition of land for municipal or local board purposes, municipal boundary negotiation, uh, K, a position plan procedure criteria or instruction to be applied to any negotiations carried on or to be carried on on behalf by or behalf of the municipality or local board. Again, municipal boundary negotiations. That was carried and the meeting was held. So uh, we're, we're, we're operating a little bit differently tonight as it's uh, the first meeting of, of the year. So welcome and good evening to everyone. Um, on the agenda, it says that the order Perry Sound comes first, but we're going to do the year in review first, and then we'll go to the um, uh, the order of Perry Sound. So um, again, uh, good evening, welcome, Annie. And I'd like to begin by, by acknowledging that we're on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg people within the Robinson-Huron Treaty area and beside the waterways that were traveled by the Métis of this region. Given the unprecedented situation that we've had experienced since 2020 due to COVID-19, uh, the, the virus, it kind of feels like the movie, Groundhog movie. Uh, you know, it, it keeps getting replayed. So, um, but I wanna say that I continue to be very proud of the very caring and compassionate community that we have. There are many that have, give of their time and resources to help others that are in need. And I want to thank all those that do as it's really appreciated. To all the essential and frontline workers of the area, thank you for everything that you're doing. And to the businesses that, that have had to adapt to the changes and do their best to keep the doors open when they could, thank you for your perseverance and your service. I was really hoping that this year's New Year's levy and presentation of the order of Perry Sound could have been in person, but this COVID experience has created a new twist that we are now in a reset position. I'm truly hoping that we can do the right things that will allow us to move forward to in-person gatherings in the future. And many things that we used to do either cannot be done right now or are allowed in a very modified format. I commend all the Town of Perry Sound staff for their efforts to ensure that you have access to the town's services throughout the pandemic. When I think of our first in-person family day events that we were just getting used to and how busy they were, things have certainly changed. And I do know that staff are working on some events that will hopefully engage the community and provide some family adventures as well for this year. Despite the challenges of 2021, there were a number of very exciting and positive developments that make me very optimistic about our future. The provincial and federal governments approved the Recreation and Culture Center project with a grant of $23.3 million. The six municipal funding partner partners have ent entered into a partnership agreement which establishes each municipality's ob obligations and created a municipal services board to oversee the design, construction, and operation of the new facility. There's a lot of work ahead to make this center a reality. And one thing this project demonstrates is that when we all work together with a common goal, we can accomplish great things. Collaboration, conversation, and cooperation are the keys to success. 108 building permits were issued with 80 for new residential and five for commercial projects. The value of the builds in 2021 was just over $21 million. One of these builds is the new Best Western under construction at the South End. It's nearing completion and will offer 93 premium rooms to the town's accommodation offerings. And I understand that they're working towards a May 1st opening. 
We currently have an additional 429 approved units that are ready for construction. The developers need only to take out building permits and put shovels in the ground. And these represent a mix of housing types. As we continue to promote the area and attract new investment, the town hosted three international business delegations between October and December. The companies are looking to invest in production of electric vehicle charging station, furniture for hotels and modular homes. Each project is valued, valued at two to three million. And a special interest is the project to assemble electric vehicle chargers by Infocom Limited. Canador College, West Perry Sound Campus, well, welcomed its first ever cohort, co cohort of 28 international students in September. And this will infuse over $600,000 in additional income to the town's economy on an annual basis. Richard Boddington, producer and director filmed, who filmed Wickensburg, a family um, adventure movie in Perry Sound from December 1st to October 8th, a crew of about 40 people was employed and the BD building rented for a production office. The project contributed approximately $1 million to the town's economy by hiring local actors, trades, caterers, equipment rentals, accommodation and transportation. The film will be released on September 1st of this year and Richard is planning to shoot a sequel to Wickensburg and Perry Sound this year. Perry Sound Area Industrial Park, jointly managed by Perry Sound, McDougall and Carling, sold 17 lots representing all remaining service land over the course of 2021. Notable, inv notable investments facilitated by the town's EDO include ECO Development Group purchased six lots for its future CLT cross-laminated timber prefab housing plant. This will be the first such enterprise in Northern Ontario. The CLT plant will occupy 25,000 square feet and create 45 jobs. Production is expected to start in early 2023. Singular Solutions Incorporated purchased three lots to build a 23,000 square foot plant to produce biodegradable food packaging. The project will create 22 jobs with production expected to start at the end of 2022. The Great Perry Sound Grand Reopening was a gift card campaign uh, to encourage shopping at local retailers. 20 vendors signed up, it was organized and run by Shirley Johnson, a local resident in March. The campaign was supported, included monetary donations by myself and some counselors, while the town's economic development department provided social media coverage. So big thank you to Shirley for organizing that. For the Stocky Center, 2021 started out very similar to the spring of 2020. In-person events, meetings, weddings, performances, films, and museums were precluded from operating for much of the calendar year. Despite being shut down for 202 days, when the green light was given to performing arts venues, the Stocky Center was excited and eager to bring back uh, people again as safe as possible. Since August 10th, 2021, the Stocky Center was able to host 57 in-person events safely and successfully at the facility and open the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame to patrons. Over the course of the short five months that we were fully open, we had approximately 6,500 patrons through our doors for organized events. This number does not reflect the patrons visiting the gift shop, box office, visitor information center, or the Festival of the Sound. It's worth noting to date, there has not been a recorded positive COVID-19 case in our facility since the beginning of the pandemic. During the first six months of 2021, when the facility wasn't able to host in-person events due to the provincial lockdown, staff hosted nine different virtual events that resulted and over 2,550 links provided to view the events. One of the main events was the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame Q&A and induction class of 2020. Chris Lee, Sarah Salaman Sally Manning, and Peter Weltman were inducted. It was hosted by Wob Rice, 
And the event was so su successful, this style event will be included in all future inductions. The Stockey Center secured a grant and purchased and installed specialized equipment that will allow for events to be live streamed or virtually presented, allowing patrons to enjoy performances and events from the comfort of their and safety of their own home. The Festival of the Sound was the first group that had the opportunity to utilize the new equipment for their virtual season. And staff are eager and excited to further learn this specialized skill and continue to offer virtual events to our community. Without being able to hold any family programming over the March break in 2021, staff offered take-home kits to families in the community at no charge, allowing families to participate in a variety of activities for, from Olympic challenges, science experiments, and a variety of arts and crafts in the safety and comfort of their own homes. There was also the very popular six kilometer fitness trail challenge that staff organized to get people out and active. The town continues to look for ways to reduce red tape and improve the planning process. In 2020, the minister delegated the authority, Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing, uh, I should mention that, delegated the authority for uh, official plan amendments from the province to the town. This will take up to one year off the time, timeline for official plan amendments. In 2021, the minister approved the town's request to be removed from the Perry Sound Area Planning Board. Effective January 1st this year, the town will make the final decision with respect to severances and consents. These actions reduce costs, reduce processing time, streamline development, and reduce red tape. Big thank you to Minister Clark uh, for his efforts on this. The West Perry Sound Economic Development Collaborative recently highlighted some of the success achievements that uh, area communities and businesses in 2021 um, moved forward. In 2021, West Perry Sound businesses successfully attain, obtained over 2.4 million in grant funding from the federal and provincial governments. These investments rec recognize successful and dynamic businesses in the region and are expected to create at least 40 new jobs when complete. Highlights include Connor Industries received $918,550 to renovate their facility, construct two new buildings and purchase equipment. The project is expected to create 12 new jobs. Crofter Foods received $1 million to construct a new facility and expand their production. The project is ex expected to create nine full-time jobs. RJW Enterprises received $113,968 to renovate their facility and purchase equipment. The project is expected to create six new jobs. Wave Fiber Mill received $200,000 to establish a fiber processing mill at the Perry Sound Area Municipal Airport. The project is expected to create 10 new jobs. So despite COVID and its challenges, there was a lot of activity in 2021 and a lot to celebrate. As we work together, I remain very optimistic about our future and look forward to a prosperous 2022. COVID has impacted our community in different ways and in to different extents. Please continue to support our local businesses by shopping local and our charities that support those in need. On behalf of myself and council, happy new year and all the best to everyone in 2022. Thank you, merci, miigwech. And now for the order of Perry Sound. And if Jason, you can turn on your camera, that would be wonderful. Um, I think we need per permission to do that. Oh, there he is. Hi. We're good. So the Order of Perry Sound um, is our highest honor for achievement. It's awarded annually to a Perry Sound resident for uh, or contributing member who has enriched the lives of others in our community. The Order's motto is they desire a better community. So before getting right into the announcement, I'll remind you of some members awarded over the last 21 years. 
all whom expressed in their words the deeds for the, and deeds for their desire of a better community. It was Ab Gabriel, Bill Hall, Ernie Wathy and Tim Van Kunit, Dave Thomas, John McPhee, Joan Huff, Wayne Cormier, Ray Pavlov, Barb Cardi, George Green, Ke Keith Smith, Judy Kovacs, Faye Marwood, Jim McCubrey, Gail McDonald, Ann Bossart, Howard Wesley, Terry Little, Dennis Miner, Richard Lunn, Douglas Breer, Peter Istavan, and Linda West. And now joining those ranks, it's my pleasure to announce the 2021 order and uh, of Perry Sound is awarded to Jason Preedy. And so Jason is a paramedic with the Perry Sound District DMS and a volunteer firefighter with the Town of Perry Sound Fire Department. His time away from work is all about helping others. It's largely due to his deep care of others, especially the less fortunate that Jason was nominated and is receiving the 2021 Order of Perry Sound. Jason has been a driving force at the Perry Sound District EMS Food Drive and the annual Perry Sound District EMS Toy Drive since 2006. He's been instrumental in mobilizing friends, coworkers, and members of the communities of Perry Sound District to raise well over $210,000 in donations to food drives, and toy drives benefiting many children to make sure every child has an opportunity to experience the magic of Christmas morning. Throughout the years, Jason has formed many partnerships with agencies like the Salvation Army, Harvest Share, and other service clubs, all of which support families in need at Christmas and throughout the rest of the year. His genuine inspiration to help others is infectious and held in the highest regard by those who have had the pleasure of supporting and working with him by those touched by his generosity. Jason's quick to give credit to others, quietly evading uh, bringing attention to himself. And today is a good opportunity to ensure a small measure of credit falls again, as it should, squarely on his shoulders. So thank you, Jason, for your tireless giving of your time and dedication in recognizing these many accomplishments and efforts. I now extend my warmest congratulations to Jason Preeti and bestow upon him the 2021 Order Perry Sound. So Jason, we will get to you. It's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's really nice when you can do it in person, but we can't. So there is a medal that, does, that goes with this. If I take that off, I think you might be able to see it a little bit better. Oh yeah. Okay. So you do get that, okay. Yeah, and then there is also a there is a um, a letter and a certificate um, from the town of Perry Sound from Council, uh, congratulating you on on your efforts and the certificate, which you decide you want to have framed, you you can, but we will get this all to you so that. Um, you can have those in your possession and join the ranks of the others that have also received this award. So thank you very much. And everybody just thank you, Jason. Thank uh, you. And do you have anything you want to say? Yeah, I'd just like to uh, thank your worship and counselors for uh, choosing me to uh, for this award. It is uh, deeply, I'm deeply honored for it. I'd like to thank um, Ray Pavlov for nominating me and um, Frank May, my EMS manager for um, and uh, Jim Hanna on behalf of the West Pace Sound Health Center for um, supporting and letters and supporting for this award. Um, I'd also like to thank, like, I'll take credit for organizing a lot of the events that we've put on over the years, but I have to uh, like, give a lot of praise for to my coworkers, the other medics and uh, dispatchers that have helped out over the years. You know, I couldn't do this by myself and not just the medics and the dispatchers, but you know, like this town, I've lived in this town my whole life and this town amazes me how well we come together to, to help the last fortunate 
you know, I've even, um, I've watched other services over the years when they do their toy drive and stuff, you know, and, and these services are in the cities and we do just as well, if not better some years with, and it's population of like hundreds of thousands of different. So I'd like to uh, thank everybody that's donated their time, the businesses that have, you know, given us um, the great deals that we can, so every dollar that we raise can go as far as we possibly can. Um, I'd like to also thank my beautiful wife and my daughter for um, allowing me to go out on times to uh, you know, leave home to um, go and do our fundraising. Um, I think that's about it. I can't think of anybody else that I need to think, thank. But I would like to say one thing. I'm wearing my, free, uh, my favorite hoodie today. If I don't know if anybody can see it, it's saying it's okay not to be okay. And in our job, especially over the last couple of years, we, we go, we see a lot of people that are, you know, financially, mentally, or physically, you know, are, are, are having difficulties. And it's, um, I just want everybody to know that's, that reads this or that's watching this or whatever, you know, that it is okay not to be okay. And you know, that my phone's always on 24 seven. I know most of my, uh, most of the medics, the dispatchers, anybody, you know, if you need somebody to call, and you don't have anybody, you can call one of us and we'd be more than happy to sit there and listen to, uh, to anything that you need to discuss. And I think that's it. I'd like to say, I'd just like to thank everybody for um, giving me this opportunity. It's a great honor. Thank you. Uh, hey, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I can remember when uh, your family lived just, uh, I believe it was on Victoria Avenue there. Um, now, was that before you were born or? No, that would have been, well, I came here when we were, when I was two, two years ago. Okay. Away. So I don't, I, you know what? I don't even remember Victoria. I remember other places we lived in, but Victoria, <laughs> I don't remember that one. I must've been really young. <laughs> <laughs> I think you probably were. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. Well, Jason, thank you very much. And thank you to all those that supported you in this uh, effort to, to get the order of Perry Sound for you. And uh, now we have to get on with our council meeting, but uh, it is greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. All the best. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, so as far as the use of the railing um, and the functionality of the railing for the public, it is complete. Um, there are some additions to the, the bottom of the railing that are more functional for our equipment, um, which won't impact the use of the railing at all. So for all intents and purposes, uh, it's, it's there and totally functional and available for use. Uh, so my other uh, comment was, um, I, I've uh, asked a couple of people, I noticed that uh, Judy Kovacs has uh, made a comment to council and uh, quite a favorable comment about the railing. I've asked a couple of people who have um, disabilities to uh, use that railing to see if there were any uh, tips or hopes of changes and all seem to be favorable. So I think that was really great so that we kind of get a testing out right from the get go. And I get the, so it's really grand that it's done. I put a little pink bow on it because I wanted to say thank you. And I have to say that um, uh, one of the um, workers for the um, uh, consulting company, I guess, uh, for the completion of that uh, project was working on the 24th of December, trying to get that railing going. So it really showed dedication to that um, company that was involved. And so we can only hope that when also the functionality, because I, I know the snow pile goes by and so we want everything to stay as uh, wonderful as it is now that everything will uh, work out smoothly. So um, thank you. And I'm sure I will be doing another thank you when even the very last final uh, touch has happened. So it's really great that everybody has uh, contributed. Oh, and, oh, I must say that one day Vinny stopped me because it showed me that he was uh, very conscientious of, um, of the railing uh, and it kind of had stopped me to say, hey, this is what we're going to do today. So, you know, it just shows you there was real teamwork here. And so thank you. Okay. Any other questions of staff? No. Uh, Doug, I just noticed that uh, you didn't get the memo about the color of tie tonight, Ray. Because see, Roger and I are both wearing like light silver ties. Oh, I didn't. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> I'm uh, blue. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. Correspond I'm not sure that I have the color to accommodate that. I'm not. I'll have to check my collection. <laughs> Correspondence, Ms. Johnson. Worship, there are uh, two items of correspondence on the agenda and a third was added today. The first item is from David Garrigan. He writes with concerns about uh, the town's partnership with Ontario Service Line Warranty Canada. So Service Line Warranty Canada uh, sent out information to residential homeowners in the town of Perry Sound regarding a warranty program they have for sewer and water lines from the house to the uh, to the town line. And uh, Mr. Garen again is expressing concern about that, believes that there are maybe other superior products uh, in the insurance business and wonders why the town is partnering uh, with this company. The second item is from Judy Kovacs and uh, Councillor Keith referred to this uh, letter earlier. Judy was expressing appreciation for the installation of the Cascade Street railing. And the third item, as I mentioned, that was added today is a letter from uh, Wayne Pierce. Uh, just pulling this up. Uh, Wayne Pierce, who is the general manage for, manager of Bourgeois Ford North Inc. Um, Ford um, car company with a request to be permitted to continue to use the vacant lot at 7 McMurray Street for overflow parking. Um, the company has been told to discontinue that overflow parking and, and they're making the request to be permitted to continue that. So uh, in all cases um, of the correspondence, the people who have written the correspondence have been responded to and letters have been forwarded to appropriate staff. And that's the correspondence. Okay, with regard to the um, uh, Ontario Service Line warranty, I'm wondering if there's direction from Council to have this reviewed to find out whether we need to support this anymore or 
well, not really support it, but um, whether we really need to have our logo on that anymore. Um, you know, at one time, there weren't a lot of options out there for service line um, uh, warranty or insurance. I know I was able to get it on mine, which uh, through my insurance company. And, you know, I think it's being offered a lot more now that people can put that on there uh, with their insurance provider. So I'm wondering if we could have a report back to council uh, on this or whatever, and whether we need to actually do that. Uh, Doug? Yeah, I would uh, certainly move it or second it. Uh, in, indeed, I think when you're any uh, corporation that uses our town logo, um, you know, yeah. it's, it's very, very touchy ground and, and yeah. they could set a precedent and maybe go right. in an area that we don't want to be. So I think it's a good idea to review it. Yeah. yeah. So moved by Council McCann, seconder. Uh, Council Backman. And okay, any any comments on that direction? Council Backman. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Just as a side note that if we are um, continuing it or even putting it out anywhere, if we could just maybe note that to, to contact their local insurance companies first to ask and see. Sure. Thanks. But, yeah. Yeah, we, they, they're the ones that put the letter out. So it's not us. So but I think people should check with their insurance companies to find out if they can get it, you know. Um, okay, any further, uh, Councillor Horn? Um, certainly, I think a lot of residents of the town of Perry Sound are confused why this letter keeps coming out every year. Um, I think it was, uh, if I'm mistaken, um, initiated, initiated by FCM and um, uh, we were part of that as a municipality. So if we can support our local um, insurance brokers more so than uh, this company, obviously that keeps um, that keeps the uh, money local and probably a better product than what is being offered. But for me, I think uh, we just need to get rid of this. Okay. Well, we can we can definitely once we get this back, we can discuss that. Yeah, it was the local authority services or LAS through AMO that um, that had <clears throat> recommended it. Any further comment? No. Nope. Anyone opposed to this direction? No, nope. that's carried then. Thank you. Um, okay. We don't have any deputations. So we'll go to reports and we'll start uh, with Councillor McCann. Hey, thank you very much, Councillor McCann with the blue, blue tie. Um, good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, fellow council members, uh, staff, and uh, those watching. Um, I've had a couple of special meetings to report on uh, in the last, uh, since our last uh, council meeting before Christmas on Monday afternoon, one o'clock, January 6th, along with Councillor Borneman, I attended a special Belvedere Heights Board of Management meeting that was uh, electronically. We talked uh, about property, life lease, zoning, succession, senior housing, uh, in light of the campus of care model that is in the near future um, and how the pieces are going to come together. Uh, and then on uh, Wednesday, January the 12th, with Councillor Backman, I attended electronically the uh, meeting with the Perry Sound Public Library Board. Um, and that was a special meeting in which we discussed the succession plan and managing our building and our assets. And uh, just to want to take this opportunity on behalf of the West Prairie Sound District Community Support Services to thank everyone who contributed to the uh, Be a Santa to a Senior uh, program this year. Donations are tax deductible and are graciously accepted at any time. Support Services provides Meals on Wheels, transportation services, outreach programs throughout uh, the year. And uh, I certainly would offer my uh, congratulations to, uh, to Mr. Preeti on behalf of uh, winning this wonderful honor, the honor of Perry Sound for 
um, for 19, for 2019, 2021. And I would take this opportunity, being our first time together in the new year, to wish on behalf of Council and uh, my own family, uh, take this opportunity to wish everyone a very happy and healthy new year. Uh, if I can just say in these unprecedented times in the midst of worldwide pandemic and news of third and fourth waves, I know it's easier said than done, but I hope you will join me in harboring some faith and hope that things will indeed get better. Now, I use the word unprecedented, and maybe that's not fair, because it takes away from the impact of hardships, the sacrifices and tragedy from world events in the past, such as world wars and those that followed not to mention the uh, um, fact that the World uh, Health Organization lists some 20 uh, previous global pandemics and uh, epidemic diseases that we all had to deal with and certainly the Great Depression. So we've all, uh, the human race is, is very, very resilient. We've weathered these things before and I know we will get through this. So happy new year and health, happiness and prosperity to everyone. Thank you, that's my report. Thank you, Councillor Burden. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year to all. Um, and Jason, congratulations. Uh, Well-deserved award to you, and uh, you've worked very, very hard to uh, make things better for other people in our community, and I hope that our thank you is enough to uh, make you appreciate uh, or realize that we appreciate you, and thank you so much for that. Um, year in review, uh, well done, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it's nice to see all the things that are happening here. Sometimes uh, even we here on council tend to uh, forget how much we've accomplished over the years. So it's uh, nice to be reminded and, and really nice to remind the, the uh, general public, uh, the, the people that support us, uh, what we've done and what's been accomplished here. So thank you for that. Um, on January the 12th, I attended the regular monthly meeting of the Downtown Business Association. A um, couple of items there. The uh, Beautification Committee, uh, uh, they, they looked very seriously into, uh, in their uh, wish to recognize the Every Child Matters movement, they looked into uh, some painted crosswalks in the main intersection downtown. Um, after some deliberation and investigation, they found that uh, this uh, had potential to create some problems over the uh, time period that it might be there. Uh, trying to maintain such a thing and keep it looking good uh, with all of our winter conditions and salt and snow plows and the heat and traffic in the summer, uh, they felt it would be very difficult to keep it looking the way it deserves to look. So they decided to look at an alternative and they're looking at uh, completely rebuilding the uh, garden in, on the Seguin Street front of the Scotiabank and putting in some uh, you know, a monument and a nice tree and some orange flowers and, and so on. And that's something that you know, we uh, as a board or as, as a group can, can maintain and keep looking good over the years. So that's where they're looking right now and hopefully they'll have that up and running by the first of the summer. Um, the uh, events committee, uh, uh, DBA events committee is looking at uh, sort of revamping the way they do things too and, and limiting themselves to probably two bigger events each year, uh, uh, summer carnival and, and the uh, girlfriends week uh, later on in the year um, and, and putting more effort into those and more of their funds into those. And uh, so that's the way they're looking at going this year, if we can run any events at all, and who knows yet. Um, January 13th, I attended the uh, regular meeting of the DSAB, the District Social Services Administration Board. Um, budget deliberations were completed and the board approved the budget as it was proposed by the uh, uh, Chief Financial Officer and her staff, and uh, I thank them for a wonderful job they did in preparing that, and uh, that is my report. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Burden, we, we are looking at, I believe it's going to the um, Accessibility Committee to take a look at uh, painting crosswalks downtown to do that, so um, I think that was decided a little while ago. So 
that should come through to them and then we'll know better on that. So it'd be something that the town would end up looking after. DBA wouldn't have to. Okay. Yep. Um, Councilor Bornemann. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year to all. Uh, before I forget and we get away from crosswalks, I, strangely, I'd emailed Mr. Kearns today. I'd had uh, contact with some folks at the uh, new youth drop-in center at the St. Mary's or at the uh, Mary Street uh, Center. And they were inquiring as to the process of uh, potentially painting crosswalks. So I'm wondering if maybe they could be included in any discussion that might come about regarding that if uh, if possible so maybe we, maybe we can just uh, whoever's looking after that accessibility committee if they can okay Bonnie uh, I, I was going to suggest maybe they could also write a letter to the town in attention yeah. to the Advi uh, accessibility committee so we could have that information, please. Yeah, Ab absolutely. <laughs> I'll get back to her. Her name is Colleen. I'll get back to her and provide that information. Great. Should it Thanks, go to, who, sh yeah. who should it go to? Uh, Councillor Keith? Um, Mr. Cairns? I'm not sure who I'm uh, directing her to write to. Uh, it, it, it should go, yeah. To who? Councillor, uh, to, to Mr. Kearns. Okay, thank you. Yep. Uh, so, so quickly, uh, prior to uh, leaving on my uh, Christmas uh, adventure uh, on December 16th, the airport commission met and after months of back and forth and legal ease, we entered into a contract with Halls Construction with respect to the uh, repositioning and, and extension of the, uh, the runway at the Perry Sound Airport. Uh, the contract is in uh, the vicinity of $9.6 million. Halls are on site and uh, some excavation work uh, had begun. I'm not sure how uh, heavy equipment and people fare in this kind of weather, but uh, they had uh, started the work uh, 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 before winter set in. Uh, Councillor McCann mentioned the... Um, the Belvedere Heights meeting on on January 6th, and I attended a, another airport meeting the following day, January 7th. I want to uh, congratulate Ms. McNamara and the staff at the BOCC for the work that's uh, been going on at uh, Kinsman Park. Uh, uh, council is in the, you know, we've uh, supported that. Uh, we've gotten finally I think the proper equipment out there that makes the job uh, much better easier and the product better but the the staff haven't been uh, idle with the uh, the lockdown at the rink they've been out there busy and I can say that the facility both the toboggan hill the playground and the ice surface is being well used by uh, a whole pile of young folks and some not so young folks. So uh, congratulations. I, I hope your mother nature cooperates and we are able to maintain this uh, uh, for some time yet to come. And that's my report for this evening, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Councilor Mr. Warren. Mayor, uh, yes. might I just add, just so that it doesn't get lost in respect to that question about who should the letter be addressed to, and it was suggested, Mr. Cairns, can uh, Mr. Bill Lagans, who is the chair of that accessibility, could his name also be put on that letter, seeing as he's the chair of that advisory committee, please? Sure. Thank sure. you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Horn. Good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. On January 10th, I attended the Chamber of Commerce meeting and um, just would like to report that there are 143 members of the Chamber of Commerce and that the AGM will be happening on January 25th. And obviously, uh, it has moved to a Zoom conference. 
So the timing of the event on that day is 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. There'll be networking first, the AGM and speaker to follow. Please go to the Chamber's website if you'd like to register. So the process will be the AGM, director recognition, new director welcome, welcoming, and then the post meeting will be a uh, speaker who is from the West Perry Sound Smart community. And of course, that is Liz McWalter. So again, that is January 25th from 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, the Chamber is currently looking for four new directors. And also I'd like to give a shout out to Michelle Berry, who has retired from the board of directors of the Perry Sound Area Chamber Commerce. She served 20 years and we all know Michelle as the owner of the Perry Sound KOA. So big shout out to uh, Michelle and her volunteer service for the last 20 years. Also a shout out to, uh, to Jason, as everyone has done. Jason began his working career at Community Living Perry Sound and went on to uh, become a paramedic and has done great things um, for uh, everything that was mentioned for the Order of Perry Sound. And lastly, a massive shout out to Graham Ritchie, who has qualified for the Canadian Men's Olympics uh, cross country ski team. We wish him all the best in uh, Beijing. And just to show you from a small town, you you can do great things. So that's my report. Thank you. And absolutely we can. Yeah. Councillor Keith. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, fellow councillors, uh, staff and the public. Well, my, my uh, discussion will be very short. Uh, I had no meetings uh, since uh, the third week of uh, December. I do want to say that I do have some mixed feelings and I think it's all for the best though, is that uh, my position as chair of the Perry Sound Area Planning Board has come to an end as uh, certainly the town of Perry Sound is moving forward and we uh, will be able to uh, plan and make decisions. I think it'll be very efficient. So I'm looking forward to seeing the progress uh, there. I will say though, uh, even though I wasn't doing meetings, I was certainly was very active with that Christmas uh, kettle, uh, different times, uh, trying to uh, assist our community again in raising money. And certainly as it's been mentioned, we definitely do have a real generous community. And two other things quickly, I have tested out that uh, uh, Cascade Railing Bridge many times. So I can see it's uh, very sturdy so far. I mentioned that again. And I just uh, want to say we live in a great community, and I think we should always remember that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Backman. Thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, everyone. As noted by Councillor McCann, I did participate in the library meeting last week, which we did look at the succession plan for um, the building and that was the only meeting that I attended since our last council meeting and as well I'd like to wish everybody a happy new year and again congratulations to uh, Mr. Pretty on the nomination this evening. Job well done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so council staff and public I really don't have a lot to report. Most of it went into the, the preamble so um, but uh, Councillor Burden did cover off the DSAB meeting and uh, we're between Christmas and uh, New Year's, there were a number of Zoom meetings that I attended on Amo's behalf. Um, but um, that was all hopefully for the good. So that, with that, now we'll go to the um, resolutions. <clears throat> So moved by Councillor Burden and seconded by Councillor Borneman. The Council of the Corporation of the Town of Perry Sound hereby provides permission to the Kinsman Club of Perry Sound to sublet the Kinsman Club facility to the provincial drive test. Any discussion on that? Councillor McCann? 
Uh, is this a, a like a one or two day a week thing? Uh, and what's the duration? Uh, I guess what's involved here? Ms. McNamara? If I may, through you, Your Worship. Councillor McCann, um, this is actually more of a housekeeping item than anything uh, from Council's perspective. The Kinsman Club has been uh, renting the, uh, that space out to the Provincial Drive Set Test Centre since early 2007 on a weekly basis. Um, so uh, ever since they were kicked out, I'll say, of the YMCA or the former Optimist building, um, the Provincial Drive Test has found a home in the, uh, in the, in the, sorry, in the Kinsman Shack. Okay, great. Thank you. I pictured all these 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 cones set up in the parking lot <laughs> but that's great thank you any further councillor backman thank you your worship just to note i was very lucky to go to uh, the facility taking my 16 year old son there <laughs> last month and i can uh, contest that it was been very well used of uh, people to all ages so it's really great that we can accommodate them uh, within the, the facility. So I support it. Thank you. Good. Anything further? Nope. Okay. Anyone opposed to passing this resolution? Nope. Okay. That's carried. Yeah, there's lots of room to park a car out there. Uh, moved by Councillor Bornem and seconded by Councillor Keith. The Council hereby supports the attached resolution entitled Support Bill 279 Environmental Protection Amendment uh, Act Microplastics Fibers for Wash Machines uh, 2021. And the resolution be sent to the Premier with a copy to our MPP, Norm Miller. Ms. Johnson, am I to read all this? I think you can consider that uh, members of council have have it, and so the resolution is structured to adopt it as okay. a plan. All right, it is extremely lengthy. So, um, are all members with good with that, Councilor Borneman? Yeah, I, I just wanted to say I, you know, all, all uh, honesty here, I was a participant, or we were participants in this program. Yes. And, um, you know, the, for the, the, this is a, a no brainer in my mind, uh, the, the, the apparatus attached to the washing machine easily, you empty it once every two or three or four months, depending on the volume of laundry that you're doing, uh, it was no fuss, no muss. We continue to use the thing and will uh, so long as it's functioning. And, and as, as I say, it's amazing what came out of it. What was plastic and what wasn't is not for me to say. I'm not that scientifically skilled, but uh, there was a lot of stuff that would have otherwise went into the wastewater system, uh, held and dumped into the garbage can at the house. So, if, and in my mind, you know, they used to say the solution for pollution is dilution. If we're finding plastic in fish in Georgian Bay, uh, I can only imagine that with the volumes of cottagers and seasonal residents on many inland lakes that, uh, that those same findings are or will soon become apparent on those bodies of water. So in my mind, everyone should be using one of these things. Yeah, yeah. So the gist, just so that everyone knows, the gist of this, this resolution is supporting legislation that would, if comes into effect, would mean that manufacturers that manufacture wash machines would have to include in that wash machine a, um, a way of collecting the microfibers so that they can be taken out and gotten rid of instead of going into the water system. Uh, so, um, you know, fish are ingesting it, we're ingesting it, um, and it's it's a way of cleaning cleaning that up. So if everyone's good with me uh, 
that synopsis of, of this particular very wordy uh, resolution. Uh, anyone opposed to passing this resolution? Nope, that's carried then. Uh, moved by Councillor Horn, second by Councillor Keith, that Council accepts the quotations from Ultig Engineering for network and server upgrades for the water treatment plant and wastewater treatment plant SCADA systems to allow for the migration of those systems to an industry standardized platform that will allow for flexibility and expansion to remote portions of the system. Who wants to talk about this? Uh, Mr. Hall or Mr. Kearns? Um, yeah, Your Worship, I can speak to this. Um, so this is in relation to our, our supervisory control and data acquisition systems within both water and wastewater. So it's basically the data collection control systems that help run uh, both water and wastewater systems. And um, Due to the unfortunate uh, sudden passing of our previous SCADA system provider, who was with us quite for quite some time, um, a couple of decades, as a matter of fact, right from the uh, infancy of the water treatment plant, I believe, right from the time it was built, um, and provided us with excellent service. Um, unfortunately, he passed away suddenly, uh, and Altec Engineering was able to step in to provide us with immediate support services, um, as well as uh, helping us acquire the knowledge we needed to be able to modernize the system to an industry standard, I'll say. Um, our intention in moving forward, this is a, a proposal for a sole source purchase uh, through the uh, Altig. Uh, and with the, uh, the idea being the end product will be something that can be supported by multiple providers should we decide to go that way so that we wouldn't be um, into a proprietary system that can only be supported by a single provider so okay any questions further questions councillor keith yes i'm just wondering uh, this company mr karen's um the Alteg, uh, how long has it been around? Because it's certainly the reports suggest, uh, you know, that it has been helpful with the upgrades at the Perry Sound Area Industrial Park. Could you advise, please? Yeah, certainly, through your worship. Um, I don't have the exact numbers, but um, so Alteg Engineering is actually the the parent company. Uh, NLS Engineering uh, was purchased by Alteg. NLS has been around for quite some time in Ontario and uh, was familiar with the architecture uh, used by the previous provider as well um, and the equipment. So they, they have been in the industry for quite some time in Ontario. What we're seeing in a lot of cases with engineering firms is that they are, uh, a lot of the smaller firms are being purchased by larger multinationals, um, but they're still maintaining their local support. So that's, uh, that's part of what we have right now is, uh, I'll call them local as in, in Ontario, uh, support network through that company right now. And they, uh, yes, yeah, so the Perry Sound Area Industrial Park, and uh, I believe, I don't wanna speak on behalf of other, one of our neighboring municipalities, I'll say, um, was being supported by our previous supplier as well. They had the same uh, SCADA support service and, this company was able to help them migrate as well over successfully to a, a newer platform. Good. Councillor Barnum. So Mr. Cairns, I think you covered this, but just to be clear, this isn't, uh, you know, one of the risks that we had with our previous uh, <coughs> contractor was he was a one-off. He was a, an individual. Um, as I understand it, that is not the case with with uh, this company that, you know, any transition that we might choose to make in future will be of our own volition. It won't be because services are no longer available to us. Um, through your worship. Uh, absolutely. 
uh, that has been, um, that was the start of our discussion with this company. So um, we were very clear on our intention and where we want to be in the future. And they fully understood that. So, so, so part of the issue is I understood it previously that we didn't have, will we have that information if, if uh, price dictates that somewhere down the road that there's a better deal to ha be, be had, will we have the information necessary to transition to another contractor should we decide to make that choice? Um, that, that was always um, a concern previously. Uh, through your worship, yes, uh, we are purchasing it. We will own it. Um, we will own the information. It will be ours. Thank you. Any further questions, comments? No? Okay. Anyone opposed to passing this resolution? Nope. Well, that's carried then. Moved by Councillor McCann, seconded by Councillor Horn, the Council of the Corporation, the Town of Perry Sound, received the report in response to a request for a skate trail to be established at the Kinsman Park. Discussion. Councillor Keith. Yes, well, I think this is a good idea. It certainly gives us some information just to start with. Uh, I think it'd be really great if we can get this going uh, this winter because uh, people need to be kept busy. It certainly seems to me there's a variety of other communities that have been doing some of these things actually for a few years. I think of Sudbury, uh, there's uh, certainly a couple of spots where they do the same thing. And even on, and I realize that's not here, but they actually have a skating trail on Ramsey Lake. And I think of places up further north, which have a, a circular uh, sort of route like this for skating. So I, I think it's a great idea. And uh, soon we could get something going this year, even if maybe it's not perfect. Well, we all learn for, from uh, our experiences and we could just move on with next year, but we need to do something. And I think this is a good idea. Okay. Any other? <clears throat> Comments, questions? Well, I, was, I figured, Councillor Borneman, you have some key. You've been talking about this for a number of years, so. Yeah, I have. <laughs> and yet, uh, I, and, uh, you know, I fully support the, the idea, the concept, but I appreciate the report that staff have put forward. Um, this you know, I, and I re thanked uh, April and her folks earlier about Kinsman, but quite frankly, one of the reasons, in addition to the equipment, that that's going so well is the fact that the BOCC is closed and we actually have staff time and manpower to dedicate to that, that concept. So I, I appreciate the staff report that says, you know, uh, if the arena reopens in a week's time or two weeks time, depending on Mr. Ford and his uh, folks, what they determine is best for the province. Uh, I think we'll be lucky to be able to keep Kinsman in its current stead. I would rather have uh, two things running well and three things not running very well. So I think our, you know, I think we need to get our ducks in a row with the union, quite frankly, about the use of uh, casual labor, part-time uh, labor or whatever, because our current complement doesn't allow for us to do all of these things and do it properly. So I'll leave it at that. <laughs> okay. Uh, Councillor Backman and then Councillor Keith. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I believe in the report it noted that possibly reviewing this again um, after the next announcement to see when um, 
how things are going to evolve. So maybe staff could monitor that and then come back. And if it's continually going to be closed, there might be an opportunity to get something uh, going. Okay, Councillor Keith. Well, I think you also have the the opportunity, whatever started, that they can start recording their exact hours and time that is going to be that actually is involved in this. And maybe uh, I appreciate the the uh, information of obtaining the information from the union, but maybe if this uh, is able to get started also, because it just seems with COVID nineteen, we're open, we're closed, we're open, we're closed. So I mean, I don't think we can really plan that uh, things will be 100% open. I'm not going to be that positive there. The outdoors, we know that we have, and maybe it's possible, I'm not sure, but that there is some part of that, if, if it starts to be operating, that there are some volunteers that will be able to be engaged in any area, because I do see that throughout the, the uh, country, you're seeing these same sort of skating trails going on and you're seeing areas where volunteers are involved. So I think there must be a way if one really wants to make this work that it can happen if we see it as only a pilot project for this year and move on from there. Thank you. Councillor McCann. Uh, yes, as, as uh, Councillor uh, Keith was saying the, the one on Ramsey Lake in Sudbury, it is uh, quite popular as I understand. Seguin has opened up one and uh, certainly in Ottawa, the Rideau Canal uh, is a very popular thing. So this is a trend. Um, so this would be wonderful to have this uh, included. Uh, my question was, uh, will uh, there be an opportunity for the lights to be turned on for evening skating? During your, during your worship, um, frankly, uh, a, sol a solidified plan in terms of location has not been established. Preliminarily, we were considering uh, on, on one of the fields in the warning track on A or B field. We were looking at, at logistics as detailed in the report. Um, frankly, we do have ball field lights that could be, uh, that could be turned on. Uh, for the purpose of skating, it would be quite bright. Um, and I'd have to look into the feasibility of isolating that to ensure not all diamond lights would be on, but just one single source. So great question, Councillor McCann. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Barnum. No, I, I oh. fully agree with Councillor Keith that if, and again, I don't know whether this is a, contract union relations matter or not uh, with respect to volunteers, but uh, that's, uh, I know that there are people in the community, there are people in the community who helped with the outdoor ice before, and I'm sure they would for something like that, if, uh, if it's uh, doable. Okay. So this is, basically to receive the report, okay. Um, could could, could but, we receive this report and have it come back to our next agenda? By then we'll know what Mr. Ford is doing and sure. hopefully for yeah. some, and give direction at that point. Sure. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any further comments? Nope. Anyone opposed to the resolution? Nope. Okay. No one's opposed. Thank you. Carried. Moved by Councillor Keith and second by Councillor McCann that the report on reducing red tape and expediting approvals in the planning process through one, removal of the Perry Sound Area Planning Board and two, delegation of authority of the province from the province for official plan amendments be received for information purposes. Mr. Harris, anything you want to add to this? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, I think uh, you covered it uh, during your opening comments regarding 
the things that uh, the successes that we had uh, in 2021. And it's just, again, the details for members of the public so they appreciate what uh, what the changes are that should uh, assist them in expediting any applications they may have coming forward. Okay, very good. Any comments, questions? No? Anyone opposed to passing this resolution? No, no one's opposed. That's carried. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Barnum and seconded by Councillor Burden. <clears throat> Whereas municipal governments provide essential services to residents and businesses in their communities, <clears throat> and whereas the ability to provide those services is neg negatively impacted by exponentially rising insurance costs, and whereas one driver of rising insurance costs is the illegal or is the legal principle of joint and several liability, which assigns disappropriate liability to municipalities for an incident relative to their responsibility for it. Whereas the Government of Ontario has the authority and responsibility for the legal framework of joint and several liability, and whereas the Premier of Ontario committed to review the issue in 2018 with a view to helping municipal governments manage their risks and costs, <clears throat> whereas the Town of Perry Sound responded in September 2019 to a consultation process regarding joint and several liability supportive of the Attorney General's goal to find meaningful and lasting reform that lessens the cost pressures of rising insurance premiums on property taxation. And whereas the Association of Municipalities of Ontario on behalf of municipal governments has provided recommendations to align municipal liability with the proportionate responsibility for incidents and capping awards, now, therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Perry Sound is hereby support AMO's recommendations for the following. The provincial government adopt a model of full proportionate liability to replace joint and several liability, implement enhancements to the existing limitations period, including the continued applicability of the existing 10-day rule on slip and fall cases given recent judicial interpretations <clears throat> and whether a one-year limitation period may be beneficial, implement a cap for economic loss awards, increase the catastrophic impairment default benefit limit to 2 million, and increase the third-party liability coverage to 2 million in government-regulated automobile insurance plans, assess the imp and implement additional measures which would support lower premiums or alternatives to the provision of insurance services by other entities such as nonprofit insurance reciprocals, compel the insurance industry to supply all necessary financial evidence, including premiums, claims, and deductible limit changes, which support its and municipal arguments as to the fiscal impact of joint and several liability, <clears throat> establish a provincial and municipal working group to consider the above and put forward recommendations to the Attorney General and further be resolved, the Town of Perry Sound is hereby call on the Attorney General of Ontario to work minis with municipal governments to put forward a plan of action to address joint and several liability before the end of the government's current term so that municipalities can continue to offer high quality services to their communities and that this resolution be forwarded to the Honorable Doug Downey, Attorney General, the Honorable Steve Clark, Minister of Municipal, municipal Affairs and Housing, MPP, Nora Miller, and the Association of Municipalities of Ontario. <clears throat> Any questions, comments? Kind of self-explanatory enough, I think, that it co covers it off. Yeah. Um, yeah, they, they haven't really done anything. The Attorney General's office hasn't done anything with this, so... Um, there's another push put on to try and, as it's worded in there, to try and get something uh, on the table. So anyone opposed to passing this resolution? No? Okay, great, that's carried. Uh, 
I don't have a mover and seconder for 952. Councillor McCann and uh, Councillor Keith. Um, whereas <clears throat> International Day of Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation is an opportunity to honor everyone, including women, girls, boys, men, and gender diverse people who actively and courageously work towards an end to this harmful practice. And whereas 4.1 million girls are still at risk of mutilation each year, including girls in Canada, <clears throat> whereas female genitalia mutilation, FGM, is an issue in more than 90 countries on every continent, continent except Antarctica. And there are at least 200 million FGM survivors in the world, including an estimated <clears throat> 100,000 more survivors in Canada. And whereas FGM has no benefits and causes only harm, including death, death difficulties with urination, menstruation, and sexual intimacy, post-traumatic stress, stress disorder, gender dysphor dysphoria, and body dysmorphia, and increased maternal and child mortality and is recognized by the United Nations and other global organizations as child abuse and abuse of a girl's fundamental human rights. Whereas International Day of Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation is an opportunity to acknowledge and celebrate all national and international efforts, especially grassroots efforts, to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 5, which calls for the elimination of FGM and other harmful practices by 2030, and whereas the town of Perry Sound supports the human rights of women and girls so they can live a life free from the violence uh, that is female genital mutilation. And we do proclaim and declare February 6, 2022 shall be known as International Day of Zero Tolerance for Female Genital Mutilation. Anyone opposed to passing this resolution? Nope. Okay. Good, that's carried. Item 911, moved by Councillor Keith and second by Councillor Horn, that bylaw number 2021-7210 being a bylaw to authorize the temporary borrowing, borrowing to meet the current expenditures of the Town of Perry Sound until taxes are collected and other rev revenues are received be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. Are all members in favor of having the second and third readings? That's carried. Moved by Councillor Horn, second by Councillor Keith, that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. Any discussion? No, I think it's pretty straightforward. Um, anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? No, that's carried. Moved by Councillor Burden and second by Councillor McCann, that bylaw number 2021-7211 uh, being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a funding agreement with FEDNOR to assist the fitness trail revitalization project be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. Are all members in favor of having the second and third readings? That's carried. Moved by Councillor McCann, second by Councillor Burden, that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time pass, signed and sealed. Any discussion? Councillor McCann. And just as a point of order, Mr. Mayor, does your copy say 2022 or 21? The bylaw? Yeah. Mine says 2021. 2021, 72, 11. Yeah, I've got 20, should that not be 2022? I'm gonna have to ask Ms. Johnson this because everything that I've got here so far is 2021. 
Okay, I yeah, I'm just picking up on the on the fact that here at the top of the agenda, everything is 2022. It's Johnson for the confirming bylaw, <laughs> which is 2021. I don't know if it's important or not, but <clears throat> your worship. Yes, go ahead. A typographical error that can be corrected uh, by myself, just with some housekeeping. Okay. All right. So it is 2022 then. I guess so. Okay. Yeah. But yes, okay. that's correct. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, great. Any further comment on this bylaw? No? Anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? Nope. Okay. No one's opposed. That's carried. I'll move by Councillor Burden, second by Councillor Borneman, that bylaw number 2022-7212, being a bylaw to authorize the execution of a service agreement with Rice Solutions for the collection of non-refillable pressurized containers as part of the Municipal Hazardous or Special Waste MHSW uh, program. Be considered right the first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the uh, second and third readings. And that's carried. Moved by Councilor McCann, second by Councilor Borneman, that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time passed, signed and sealed. Any discussion? Anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? No one's opposed, that's carried. <clears throat> Okay, moved by Council. This is the one I was looking for. Moved by Councillor Keith and second by Councillor Horn. The bylaw number 2022-7213 being a bylaw to authorize the execution and implementation partnership for Impact Canada Food Waste Reduction Challenge Agreement for a Food Cycler Pilot Project in Perry Sound be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings. That's carried. <clears throat> Moved by Councillor Horn and seconded by Councillor McCann that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time pass, signed and sealed. This has to do with that um, dehydrator sort of composter unit that we had the presentation on to the last meeting. So, Councillor McCann. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, so, uh, I'm glad to see that this has this come forward here this time around, and maybe uh, Mr. Kearns could tell us uh, specifically uh, what's being done as we get the ball rolling on this. Uh, certainly, through your worship. So the the bylaw um, is to enter into the agreement to purchase 100 units uh, as a pilot project um, through Food Cycler. The um, you know when. We've looked at this. Um, we I had previously heard of this um, pro program, so we did a little bit more investigation. And actually, um, I think it provides a pretty unique way of dealing with organics, especially for our situation where we're not uh, as rural as some of our neighbors, uh, where backyard composting isn't perhaps as easy. Uh, and certainly at, at different times of the year, it's certainly more challenging. So. I think it, it offers an opportunity for a, a good sampling size. Um, they're suggesting our population should uh, undertake a pilot project of 100 units, which um, is very similar to the, the GBF pilot project on the washing machine filters, which was around the same size. I believe it ended up being 97 on the uptake on that one. Um, which gives a good sampling size that allows us to extrapolate that data that we will collect through this pilot project across the town. So um, I think probably by now, most people know that uh, as far as by weight, um, kitchen waste can contribute 
heavily to the amount of waste that is disposed of uh, unnecessarily, as a matter of fact. So through um, through landfilling. So I think uh, when you look at this uh, particular solution, uh, it's it's kind of it's a really neat idea. Uh, we've seen some of the uh, through that presentation they they had at council in December. Um, we followed up with some of the other municipalities that are doing the same thing. Um, and there seems to be really good results coming from it. So we're pretty excited to see what can, what opportunities this may present to us. Uh, organics have always been a tricky thing to deal with municipally. Um, organics are not pleasant to collect. They're not pleasant, pleasant to process. Um, I, I can attest to that. Uh, they're difficult to manage. Uh, and this is uh, at the source and eliminates a lot of those challenges. So. Okay, so then as a follow up, and I'm glad to hear that other municipalities are having success with this. That's a, a good barometer to go by. Now, so the 100 participating households, how will that be uh, uh, defined? How can people uh, get involved if they're interested? I think in the presentation, uh, was there some minimal cost to each household that wanted to participate? Yeah, through your worship. Uh, yes, that's correct. So the units are subsidized um, to purchase through the, the programming that uh, Food Cycler has um, managed to take advantage of through the federal government uh, and some other programs that they participated in. Uh, the municipality subsidizes part of it. And the idea is that there is a purchase price for the unit with the expectation of filling out a survey to uh, allow us to collect that data through the pilot project. Uh, there is a suggestion that perhaps um, some other municipalities have charged. The idea would be to, uh, there'd be a $150 charge for the unit. Uh, some municipalities mm -hmm. have contemplated making it a $200 charge with a a $50 refundable uh, option when we receive the data that we require. Um, that is very important as part of this, this pilot. And we need That's the data. That's a good idea. Um, I like that idea. Um, so, and we already have uh, a list started. <laughs> Staff have uh, begun a list because there was interest after the presentation uh, that should council uh, choose to, to go ahead and pass the byline and participate. We already have a, a number of folks, so we would perhaps suggest that a first come first serve uh, would be the most manageable at this point in terms of participation with the understanding that uh, that data is certainly something that is is required. Exactly. And they just contact the town office then? Correct. Yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Keith. Yes, thank you. Uh, and the question is for Mr. Cairns, because it's basically to me a, a type of wet uh, recycling. What I was interested in, and some, some of the question you've answered, uh, I would have been posing as to the amount of interest. But the other part that I'm also uh, wondering about, because uh, this is like a pilot project to get a better feel, is it going to be, I realize you've indicated first come, first serve, but it seems to me that uh, having a percentage of people who live in apartments and condos is really necessary to get a, a good flavor of, of what's going on, what's going, how efficient what's going on. And uh, is there any way, uh, depending when you're getting up a number, so is there any way that that is going to be examined? And my further question to that also, um, do you plan to be putting something on the website, something putting out in a newsletter, um, just to educate people also as to what we're doing? Uh, through your worship, I, certainly that's something we can do as far as advertising. Um, we should council choose to go ahead um, with the pilot project. Um, as far as distinguishing types of residential units, that may present a challenge in terms of uh, participation and uh, frankly I'm, I'm not sure uh, if, you know from me this is mainly a food waste organics project right so I'm not I, I can't really comment um, 
on food waste habits between multi-residential versus single family dwellings, whether there's any um, any difference. I, I do know in, in some of the blue box and recycling programs, they certainly are different, but uh, from an organics perspective, I, I don't have any particular knowledge, but we, that's certainly something we could consider um, and, and look into a little further. I guess the other thing I'm thinking along that line is that there, there still is some people, because as you've mentioned yourself, that if they're living in a residence on, on land, that they've got their, their own backyard, so to speak, there are still people that do uh, basically recycle year round. Those people that are really, uh, really gun ho into it. So it seems to me that there is an opportunity for some people who are living in condos that would uh, be able to be involved with, it would be important to them, would have that opportunity uh, if they were able to be on a pilot project like that. So I would think that information would be really helpful in, in gathering afterwards. Um, through your worship, I I think, you know, I think you've touched upon something perhaps. And um, while we wouldn't, I'd, I'd hate to exclude uh, people that are, are currently composting um, internally, if they are currently managing their organics in that fashion, um, I would encourage them to, to continue to do so. And perhaps uh, the pilot is is better suited to those that don't have that opportunity. So, any other questions, comments? <clears throat> no. Anyone opposed to passing the bylaw? Then? No, it's carried. Moved by a Councillor Backman, second by Councillor McCann, that uh, bylaw number 2022-7214, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council, be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? Carried. Moved by Councillor Keith, second by Councillor Backman, that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. Anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? Nope. Okay, that's carried. So, prior to adjourning, I'd like to offer the following information to the public regarding the next council meeting. The next regular meeting of Council of the Town of Perry Sound is scheduled for Tuesday, February 1st. 2022 at 7 p.m. The meeting will be held by a Zoom video conferencing and will be live streamed and recorded. All regular council meetings are held at 7 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of each month, except January and August, where only one regular meeting is scheduled. Council meeting schedule, notices of special council meetings, complete agendas and minutes and instructions on accessing live streamed and recorded council meetings are all posted on the town's website Go to www.perrysound.ca under news and public notices. Your TV airs council meetings on Saturday at 9.30 a.m. following a regular council meeting. And for Kojiko listings, contact www.yourtv.tv. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. And again, happy new year to everybody. Take care. Have a good evening. Take care.